Good morning. It is 10.03. I'm, like, practically on time. It is 10 a.m. It is Artificer Larry. It is daylight savings time, so it's probably a little bit earlier for everyone that's not in America if you're looking at your clock. Technically, it's earlier for me, too, but also fucking daylight savings time. So anyway, we're going to actually throw my dwarf back into the deep roads for this one. So, this is going to be fun. Um, I have been waiting to do this pretty much since I started. Because the nice thing about this is, y'all are going to look at Tali in the deep roads, and you're going to see her and her ridiculously blue eyes in the glow of delirium and be like, what? It's the same. Good morning, MH. I'm excited about this. Are y'all excited about this? Because I'm, I'm... What time is it? It is, it is 10 a.m. according to my clock. It is, it is 10.04. Because daylight savings time is bullshit. So in case you're not familiar, uh, daylight savings time was originally posited as, well, if the farmers have to get up this early, we should make everybody get up an hour earlier, because it's logical. It's not logical. They have to get up at the same time. All the time. It doesn't fucking matter. So, I, I, it's stupid, and it is not actually useful for the reasons that they decided it was useful, so it needs to fucking end, because all it does is throw everybody's internal and external clock off twice a year. So... We've got this, we've got this stupid thing where, you, you know, it's spring ahead, fall back. So you turn your clock ahead an hour in, a, in the spring, and you lose an hour of sleep. And then you turn the clock back an hour in, um, winter to, you know, where it should be, and you gain an hour of sleep that you lost in the spring. It's so fucking stupid. Anyway. Inquisitor, I must take over our investigation into the Well of Sorrows. Dozens of antiquarians and historians are begging us for the results. There have been several attempts to steal our research. While we have nothing conclusive, the research has proven useful in negotiations with interested scholars, and we should guard it accordingly. Liliana. Instead of shifting the time, shift the work hours. See? That would almost make sense. Literally, the only thing that it's doing is like, oh, well, if you have to get up at fuck 30 in the morning, let's make fuck 30 in the morning, you know, an hour later so that you have sunlight. It's like, that's that's not going to help the people that are getting up at 3 and 4, and the rest of us are just mad about it, so... You fucked up. Um, so, this is where we're at. I have no War Table missions that I can um, actually do right now. I have Doom Upon All the World, which is end game, and I'm not doing that right now because I want... I don't want to deal with the results of end game in two of the DLC uh, things. You have to deal with it for the third because Trespasser is specifically after end game. However, um, I have... Investigate the Frostback Basin, which brings us to uh, the Jaws of Hakon DLC. And then we have Disaster in the Deep Roads, which brings us to the uh, Descent DLC, which is what we're doing, because that one doesn't just immediately murder my entire party. Like, I think Jaws of Hakon starts with a lower suggested level, but also there's fucking mobs in the Jaws of Hakon DLC. The Descent is pretty steady throughout and you can do the descent dlc at like level 23 24 and not straight up die so hey good morning avery thanks for the host um who's saying this i don't know 
The Inquisition has received an urgent request for aid from Orzammar. A subterranean earthquake has collapsed one of their lyrium mines and endangered several others. Even worse, tunnel seals preventing Darkspawn from overrunning the dark dwarven-occupied deep roads have crumbled, allowing hordes of the enemy to invade. In and out of the room doing stuff. Yes! Car! Car! I have a Honda Fit. It's adorable. It doesn't have a name yet, but my, my, my SUV is with the buyer. Um... It is, it is not technically sold to the buyer yet, because I need to get the title to do that legally. But, she has the car, she has driven the car around the block at least once so that she can, you know, see how it handles. I was like, let me point out all of the things that I think you should know about this car while you're driving this around the block. Also, do yourself a favor and check out the turning radius because it's better than you think it is. And she was like, oh, this is so nice. I'm like, that's because your car is in terrible condition. <laughs> so, the, uh, the buyer has the car in, in, in her not legal possession, and I have the new car. It's so cute. I'm excited. Like, for the first time ever, I actually am kind of going, I want to drive my car. Because cause I'm comfortable driving this one. This is a new sensation. Know that even though my car is not my car anymore, it was my car. Well, no, see, MH, there's a thing about that. I don't legally have, I don't have the title for it because of, you know, various bullshit with my, uh, my folks who were supposed to have it in their safe. They do not have it in their safe. So I do not have the legal document that says that I own the car, which means that I cannot legally sell the car. So technically the, the SUV is still legally mine, but I, I don't, I don't want it. I want to sell it to this person, so it's hers, it's just not legally hers. Because I can't legally sell it without the title, and she can't legally register it without a bill of sale and the title, so it's complicated, it's stupid. I have to uh, go up to the, um, the DMV. Do I remember what the DMV stands for? No. But uh, uh, Division of Motor Vehicles, actually. Yes, I do. Um, and be like, yo, so I own this car. Um, can you give me the title so that I can no longer own this car? And they'll be like, that's 5250. And I'll be like, thanks. <laughs> Can't even make a U turn into the inside lane in a car that tiny. The car is garbage. Yikes! Oh, Department of Motor Vehicles. Okay. 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's rough. That's rough. No, uh, the the fit, the fit actually surprisingly has a a similar turning radius to my uh, the 2007 Hyundai Tucson actually. So it's like it's a much smaller car and it's gonna be much easier to do the things that I need to do in it. But I'm I'm now like even more impressed with the Tucson's turning radius because it's the same as this much smaller car. I'm gonna try to. actually read this thing that I started reading and then I got distracted by car cuz I have a new car. I'm 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 seriously considering uh naming it Dorian because I didn't do this on purpose, but I got the the slightly higher trim level. Guys, I have a moonroof. Like it's ridiculous. Um Moonroof, yeah, so, like, uh, a sunroof is just the little glass, uh, like, window on the roof of your car with that you can open and whatever, but a moonroof has, like, an inside panel that you can close under the glass. That's the difference. So, so a sunroof is basically just the glass and you're you're stuck with it and the moon roof has the inside panel that you can open and close yes not always open to the sun which is why they call it a moon roof okay 
Back to Disaster in the Deep Roads, I promise. The Inquisition has received an urgent request for aid from Orzammar. Subterranean earthquake has collapsed one of their Lyrium mines and endangered several others. Even worse, tunnel seals preventing Darkspawn from overrunning. The Dwarven-occupied Deep Roads have crumbled, allowing hordes of the enemy to invade. Orzammar is a key provider of the Inquisition's Lyrium supplies, and as such, its security is a top priority. The earthquake opened a fissure in the Storm Coast Mountains, granting direct access from the surface to the threatened region underground. Constructing a mining lift at the Fisher site will permit the Inquisition to transport forces directly to where Darkspawn fighting is fiercest. So, Cullen's like, we're gonna send my best people immediately. Leliana's like, we can, we can find people to, we can use my connections to find people to, to, to build a mining lift quickly and safely. And jo Josephine's just like, Orzammar has those people. Let's hire the people from Orzammar. I think I always go with Josephine for this part. I love Spirit Cole. It's perfect. I just realized I didn't turn up my TV, so I'm going to be, like, straining to hear this. Oh, or I can accidentally turn it off. Okay. A construction team arrived in the Storm Coast Mountains and set up a mining lift to transport Inquisition forces from the earthquake fissures opening down into the deep roads. A report sent by Messenger Bird. This is probably... Nope, that's Harding. Inquisitor, the mining lift in the Storm Coast Mountains will be finished by the time you get here. Anyone going into the deep roads should dress accordingly. Don't skimp on the armor, and bring the best weapons in Skyhold's arsenal. I also recommend packing plenty of dry rations. Most things down there will be looking to eat the Inquisition, not the other way around. Scout Harding. There we go. You know, I don't really think that he does act that differently, um, at least not from where he starts. He definitely acts differently from if you decide to make him more human. Dispatch them randomly to the war table missions. I prefer to figure out where I'm going. I know, Avery, isn't that the cutest scene? He's like, I can help people here. Thank you. And then if you if you make him more human, he's like, when does it stop hurting? I hate that so much. It it like I don't want to make characters hurt. Why would I change Cole into something that he is not? Like, it bothers me that people are like, no, that's the correct answer. I'm like, no, no, you're wrong. Going to recruit the Templars was actually really awesome. I know! It's so, it's so weird. It's so cool. Like, the, the Templar thing, like, siding with the Templars, quote-unquote, over the mages is, like, to me, it, it, it's like they decided to make it less... Like, it's like going with the mages is the body horror, and going with the Templars is the psychological horror. I know, I was so upset the first time I got to Haven, and it was Fiona and not Denim. I'm like, I care not about this random Templar that I've never met. I care about Fiona a little bit. Ah. Okay, um... Who do I need to bring? Should probably bring Cole. I'll go Cole Dorian Solus. That's that's kind of a pretty good default for where we're going, I think. Um, yeah, for now. For now, it's fine. We're gonna end up at a fucking uh, camp for long anyway. What happened to Cole? Um, if you get high enough approval with Cole, you have the option to make him either more like a spirit which he originally was, or more like a uh, human. So I don't like the option of making him more human because it changes him. And he, like, he, he hurts if you make him more human. If you make him a spirit, he goes around and starts, you can, you can get the scene where you take him to lunch in Val Royale and he's all, he's, he's just running around and helping people. He's so happy. He's a spirit of compassion. It's what he does.
don't know any of what. I mean, I'm I'm aware that you don't lore, but approval. Oh, 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 yeah. No, I mean the nice thing is with the uh, approval thing, it it's literally just if you like do things, Cole will either approve or disapprove. That's just how he is. You won't see an Orzammar dwarf on the surface. They have rules about that. They have rules about that. Now see You'd think with so many of us up here they'd relax the restrictions. If anything, this breach business has made them even more cautious. That's fair. I love all of the extra lines that you get playing a dwarf in How many quakes the descent DLC. Like, uh, at least three you get to stand runners. next to Shaper Volta and go, wait a minute, I recognize some of this dwarven writing, but I think it's old dwarven, so I can't really read it. This looks familiar. And you get to stand next to her and be like, I slightly know what I'm looking at. It's, it's so great. I love that they did that. So you haven't seen any dark spawn up here? I sharpened my arrows just in case, but they never showed. I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah, I bet. Morgan be like, if you give food to a starving child, Morgan highly disapproves. Morgan is now your rival. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> I think the, the, the difference with uh, Morrigan to the rest of the party in Origins is like... It's hard she... For a lyrium shortage. She doesn't care about being nice. So if you're nice and it would actually, like, it takes effort to be nice, she's like, that was stupid. But if it's like, you know, it doesn't actually take any effort, she's like, whatever, you did something, I guess. It doesn't matter to her. But shit's, shit's weird. Try not to shift around. And keep back from the edge. It's a long way down. <laughs> yeah. Hope you're not afraid of heights, guys. Or, you know, small spaces. Is it me, or is this the slowest lift ever constructed? It's you. It's better than climbing, Death. I could do with some music. Something with a flute. He's literally it's requesting elevator way. music. Yet they devise the most fascinating inventions. Not all ideas come from the Fade. True. These designs must be inspired by something. Yes, Palms need. Calloused, clutching, clawing when the dust came. The miners. The stones were oh, angry. Oh, coal. I, I didn't think stones got angry. Oh. Oh, man. Yeah, you can... You can... You can criticize these graphics all you want, MH. This is still the prettiest game that I have. <laughs> I don't have a lot of very new games, and also... I started gaming with a PS2. So... I, I don't care. There's something... There's something really... Like... I find like all of the the polygon graphics very nostalgic. Even a glimpse of your sky could cost me and render me castless. This stuff is just it's it's great. It it astounds me exactly? what computers we can do even if it's older it. fashioned your like this one. Also scholars and genealogists. Shapers preserve Well, it's not supposed to be realistic, MH. Orzimar. Like, we it's it's supposed to be to vaguely the realistic. Be they hit their mark with that day. one. If it was supposed to be totally realistic, the, like, the facial sliders would not be what they are, first of all. And second of all, like, I'm, I'm playing a fantasy game. Like, the 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 characters in... 
two especially were so stylized. And actually, that's another that's another thing. Um, one of the things that I tend to do, which is maybe a little bit. Mm, the quakes collapsed this mine and shattered a seal like keeping it, it's 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 somewhat illogical the way that i think about this but like someone uh on tumblr a long time ago was like the you know oh hang on i know about the legion, I've read about the legion of the dead. um Someone on Tumblr was like, so clearly the reason there's like two maps in Dragon Age uh, 2 is because, you know, Varric isn't really good at describing them, so Cassandra had to think of all this herself. She's not very creative, but she's really good at following the flow of battle a lot better than Varric is, so that's part of the reason all of the battle stuff sounded, sounded super, like, stilted and weird. And artificial because she's better at following than he is at narrating so like someone decided to take all of the all of the shit that just kind of went a little bit weird with dragon age 2 because of the because of the shortened uh the shortened production time and go no but there's a story explanation for this and i love that they did that so my brain has just been like trying to find more places to do that yeah, and the caves are like set pieces in a play, exactly. Like, there's, there's like, Cassandra's not, uh, Cassandra's not creative enough to be like, I understand how this cave system would work from nothing, I get this, I, you know, like, like, Varric doesn't spend a ton of time describing it, because why would he, it's a cave. But she's not creative enough to come up with different caves. And then... Have sent me a picture of a male inquisitor. Oh, finally made a human male inquisitor. I think I can live with. Aha! That is that is excellent. That is actually that is going to be my next inquisitor after I'm gonna I'm gonna break from Inquisition for a while and play some Assassin's Creed because I never got through Assassin's Creed Origins. So I'm just gonna start over. Um, stream that for a little while. But so the the other the other thing that my brain did was basically like, the Inquisition stands ready oh, to aid so all of the characters are hyper-stylized in worse. Dragon Age 2. Is Cassandra racist? And or is she just thinking of, you know, what, what she would have for been raised to think? The because there is, there is a slight difference Follow there. To the Legion camp. But... It's like when Rockstar could not swim to the GTA Vice City when they had to rush it, and Tommy can't swim because there are sharks in the water. Yeah, no, so that was... Actually, it's funny that you that you gave that example, because the first thing I thought of was um, Altair in Assassin's Creed, the original. He can't swim. So the entire fandom decided that that meant that he was just afraid of water, and it's, it's, it's hilarious. I love it. Um, an unsent letter from a miner. Lord Forender, I shouldn't have to remind you of the mining cast's importance to Orzammar, but apparently not even the ancestors can say when you last visited the memories. Harsh. The lyrium trade is the only reason our kingdom still stands. It is what keeps the king's coffers fat so that he may play a part in whatever little wars are raging on the surface. But lyrium is as dangerous as it is profitable, and when I write to you saying that earthquakes are threatening one of our most lucrative mines, I expect a faster response. Something unnatural is afoot. The shaft rats come out of their holes chanting nonsense. Even my own crew, men and women I've worked with since I was a child, claim to hear something in the tremors. I don't care who or what you send to help us. Just do it quickly. Minor Ordell. No subtitles in the original Assassin's Creed. Yeah, so... I'm, I'm certainly not defending it, but I suspect it's less that they don't like it and more that it was just, like... It hadn't become the norm yet to have subtitles in video games. So they were just like, yeah, this is fine. That, yeah, exactly. They didn't think of it. Oh my fucking god. 
Ban user, fuck off. Hold that thought, I have a bot to report because I also got a fucking message. Bot. Submit. Block. Close. Blah. Could have added it later via update. Um, I'm not familiar enough with Xbox 360 stuff to be like, yes, they can definitely do this. I agree. It does need a remaster. And like, so, my, my ass, right? I'm not actually good at video games. I got pretty good at Dragon Age because I've played it ten times. But... I I actually needed a friend of mine to come help me with the end of Assassin's Creed. Like, I suck at that game. So much. But, um... The, the the one thing that I will say about the subtitles is that even if they sent out the patch to to update the game with subtitles, you have to be able to connect to the internet to update it. And if you're playing on an Xbox 360 that's as old as mine, mine will no longer connect to the internet. Which is such a pain in the ass. Um, anyway, Storm Coast Fissure. From this ridge, exposed sections of the deep roads are visible below. There's history in the rock split by these quakes. And for those without sure footing, a particularly dangerous fall. Are you ready? We're about to have the first really nasty battle. Here we go. Also, watch your step. Can we can we just talk about the fact that this waterfall is coming in from the storm coast and it's probably literally just rain? Are you ready? Are you ready? Cuz I'm not. Here we go. There's an ogre. Yes, yes, Cole, I'm aware. Ogres seldom want much else. They are not smart enough. It's a dark spawn. Oh my god, I know. <sighs> Man, their faces are super fucked up. This is going well. Oh no, are they immune to cold? Hang on. Uh, greater spirit resistance, so that's not too bad. Okay. Nothing else, though, really. Ouch. Fuck you! Oh, God damn it. Yeah. This is fine. It's fine. Fuck you. Oh, what am I doing? I could open a fucking rift in its head. Hey you, stand up. I defy you. Spirit resistance it might have, but the more effort the more the more damage I can do at a time with minimal effort, the better. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, fuck. Fuck you. Yeah. No. 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 Uh, we've been attacking the whole time, Volta. Alright. Let's go. Let's go. No. Oh my god. Now's the time to attack. Volta. Enough. You don't have to tell me a thousand times. Now's the time to attack. 
I, yeah, MH, that's kind of just, that's, that's me. That's me fighting anything, particularly things that take more than a couple of blows at a time. Yeah. <laughs> Pick your poison, all of them. All right, there we go. I was gonna say that's that's getting a little uh, up close and personal with an ogre. Falta, it's distracted because it has me in its hand. There we go. Yeah. Oh, fuck off. No. Denied. There we go. Almost done. Almost done. Uh -huh. Have been Volta. The nice thing is, when you're playing a warrior, a lot of your stuff has knockback ability. So, like, it's not that hard to be like, all right, put me down, put down my party member, fuck you. As long as I have the, uh, the cooldowns available. Oof. Now we're even. Just returning the favor. If the ogre reached this point, the legion must be overwhelmed. Let us hurry. There was a dagger in there. Wait, hang on. Wrong way. I always got turned around when I fight things. All right, let's go. I will never get used to the stench of dark spawn. They corrupt everything. Even the air. Actually, that's another that's thing. Do Darkspawn smell like rot? Or blood? Like, like Darkspawn blood, which is tainted by the blight? Like, I don't... Evading is the most important mechanic if it is available in the game. Yeah, yeah, that tends to be a, a good thing to... to know how to do dodge, evade, all that shit, so you can just be like, No! Alright, now I'm gonna kill you. I love shit like that. Get those charges to the tunnels. You got it! Also, goddamn his voice. When he's not shouting, anyway. I will take your word for that. Not a game I have played, as we've uh, discussed. Like I said, it's been it's been recommended to me a handful of times, Someone but the fuses. you got it, Ren. Let's go. That's so weird. I know a kid named Ren, one of my students. Very spelled very differently, but all right. The downside to playing a warrior is, like, I don't have any area of effect attacks right now, because I don't have uh, an area of effect weapon equipped, so now I'm like, what do I have here? Got a lot of genlocked and not a lot of area of effect bullshit. Oh, I really hope that wasn't shrieks. No, okay. Which, then again, I should know better. It wasn't high pitched enough for a shriek. Holy! All right, I am I am replenishing focus really fast. That's that's amazing. I I'm I'm shocked. So Avery, what do you what do you know about uh, the plot of Nier Automata? Because MH is a really a really good person to talk to if you want to know things about the gameplay, but not not so helpful if you're a plot person like I am. What is what is what is the plot of this game? I don't know anything about it. Oh no, it's not letting me do it. Okay, so I do have to actually kill the It's a good plot, and I can't tell you. Great. Well, that's that's not particularly helpful then. 
I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, you're not gonna get me into this game if you don't give me at least, like, the setting. I literally know nothing about this game. Like, are you trying to figure out what's going on with your characters? Is it, like... What is... I don't know anything about it. And you're not gonna get me interested in a game by being like, It's very interesting. It's got good gameplay. I, I'm not. I'm not in it for the gameplay. I I play Dragon Age Origins intentionally. <laughs> I'm in it for the plot. <laughs> premise based on previous games. After I make food, go make food. Food is good. Food is important. I am sure I will be here when you get back. Yeah. I didn't mean to dispel there. All right. I brought two mages. This is a poor decision. Are we done? Alright. Mages are back up. Now, set the charges. Completely different stuff. Variety. I have no problem with streaming variety, but I gotta actually, like... I, I, I'm literally interested in plot. That's, that's it. I care a lot less about gameplay unless it's going to be like, this is entirely too difficult for someone that's not good at video games, because that's a thing that happens, because I'm not good at video games. Take cover! There we go. But, like, variety for me right now is... I have a bunch of PS4 games that I can stream. That's it. I can't stream from other things without a capture card right now. When it's quiet, dearest Iora, this will never reach you. None of my letters will. But writing helps me cope with having joined the Legion. For all the death I have already seen, there are wonders down here, and I wish you could see them. When it's quiet, there are still hints of what the Deep Roads used to be. Right now, I'm sitting under the crumbling statue of a paragon. I asked Ansa if she knew who it was, but the face is cracked. I like to think it's Endrin Stonehammer or Morok the Maul, though I know you favor Asteth the Grey. Back home, I never cared about our history. Remember old Ostig, shouting about Orzammar's former glory, naming tigs he'd never visited and people he'd only read about? I laughed at him. But being down here, seeing what we've lost? These are more than roads, Iora. They connected our empire, let our culture flourish. The stone accepted us, and we lived and moved within her. Now we cling to her like someone drowning. Forgive me. All my letters end the same. Legionnaire Grek. Spoil the prologue since it's the first hour of the game. Perfect. That works for me. I'm okay with that. Ooh, I forgot I got dragon stuff down here just by looting. Oh, and Nalthur's armor. I think that's like a legendary armor set that is dwarf only. Yay, we set up the camp. Ooh, is this where I get to talk to Ren for the first time? It is. It is. I love his voice so much. Inquisitor, meet Lieutenant Ren, a veteran of the Fifth Light and one of the Legion's finest commanders. <laughs> Someone paid her to say that. It's fine. I want you to Appreciate talk, not her. Help, Inquisitor. Collapsing that seal bought us time. Cool. Blighters had the run of these tunnels for days. Now they have a roadblock. I love his voice so much, I can't even tell you. Game takes place super, super far in the future. Got it. How many deep roads are there? How deep do they go? They'll take you from one side of Thetis to the other. If you have a death wish. She's like, I the know that. Once connected I'm a dwarf. Dwarven cities that were hundreds of miles apart. Then came the Darkspawn. Ren and I have been exploring this region, reclaiming it, but the work is slow. I bet. Mark the map, fight an army, mark the map, fall in a hole, and so on. Fair. I get the impression you two have known each other a while. Aliens invaded yeah. the Earth in 8,000s, the then humans had to route to the moon. 
Asked me to keep her out of trouble. Wait, are you telling me it takes place that on the moon? Three years ago. You can quit any time. Not when we still have things to fight about. That's that's another thing, not when we still have things to fight about. This is part of the reason I keep saying you can't take the Jewish out of the dwarves. Because like that is that's dwarves, first of all, and also that's Jews. There's there's an old adage about two Jews, three opinions. That's dwarves. It takes place on Earth, the humans are on the moon. Okay. I, silly me, I was assuming that there were also humans involved in this game. I know, I know that you play an android, but I don't, like I said, that's, that's, that's it. That is literally all I know about the game. And only because of things that, you know, you, MH, have said. I know nothing about it. I'm glad to help the Legion. The Legion of the Dead has the Inquisition's full support. That's the best news I've heard since the quakes began. Actually, the only good news. I mean, that's fair, honestly. Excuse me, goodness. No, not the Paragon statue! The history! And there's the androids to fight off the invaders. Oh, okay. You heard that. Humans presumably built those. You androids can build androids. Makes sense. It's clearer, stronger, more insistent. I hear it. Doesn't prove a thing. It's AI. Yep. These quakes are not a natural disaster. They're deliberate. There's an intelligence behind them. How do you know? How could an earthquake be caused deliberately? We get plenty of natural tremors down here. These are different. She thinks she knows why. I found an ancient text during an expedition with Ren last year. At the time, it was She just has a such curiosity. a weird pointy nose. Now? The text describes giant creatures called titans living deep underground. They sing. In I love his shrug. Genius. It looks when so uncomfortable end, with the armor. I believe we heard that rhythm. I believe a titan is causing all this destruction. A titan? Oh no! I've never heard of titans before. What else can you tell me about them? The Not much. I found predated the first light. Its pages had mostly rotted away. That's helpful. And there's no mention of the titans in Orzammar's memories. Which tells you something. <laughs> All I heard was an earthquake. How is it you and Ren hear a rhythm? With respect, Inquisitor. You were born on the surface. No, she wasn't. We don't have our connection to the stone. Shapers have great stone sense. Vault is better than most. She never gets lost. So, the thing about that is that they they imply plenty of times in over the course of this game that surface dwarves can still hear the Song of the Stone. They're just further from it. It's like, it's like, if you go into a new place when you hear all of the sounds, like, it, I, I, I hate it when I do this. I'm like, I have, I have something to say and I can't figure out how to say it. But it's like, you get used to the sounds of a place, and you hear when they're different. And then you go to a new place, and you hear everything, and you have no idea what's new. So, that, that, basically the surface dwarves just never got used to the stone. That's the implication that I got from a lot of the things that you find. What do you mean by the stone? This is, she's a dwarf, I'm not, ugh. I'm not going to ask that question. She's a dwarf. Mysterious songs often lure people to their deaths or to an archdemon. This rhythm isn't a song, exactly. It sounds like air 
flowing through lungs. Something's breathing down here. Air that can collapse a whole mine. A mystery worth investigating. Agreed. Gasp! Solus has lines. Playing the female android 2B on Route A. Your companion will be 9S, the only male android in the military force. Yorha. Okay. Androids have space stations and have transporters on Earth to teleport androids. They send the data AI from transporter to another. The body will get built. So they're so they're basically sending the AI from android body to android body. That's that's kind of intense. In my experience, no explanation is too strange to consider. For all we know, that text you found was a bedtime story. We can't be sure until we find the source. This is the fast travel mechanic. That makes sense. The my sense in the quakes is emanating from somewhere far below. The stone will lead us there. And if it comes to a fight, that'll be our job. When you die, your body gets rebuilt at the save station. Also nearby. makes a moderate amount of sense. Deep Roads Expedition Table! Hooray! The, the hilarious part about that is actually that, like, when you... Wasn't there something over here? Oh. They have backups. You die, you don't. Yeah, that's... That's, that's, uh, I was watching a, a friend, uh, stream, uh, Paper Mario, Thousand Year Door, uh, last night, and he, <laughs> I love him, he's great. He was, uh, he was getting all like, no, that's not how computers work, because one of the characters, quote unquote, is a computer. So, one of the things that he was getting worked up about was, like, what do you mean? Like, you you have... You have the ability to back up your data. If you're using, you know, your... your I forget exactly what the... what the plot said, but it was basically like, if you're... if you're saving your... memory and using fucking... um backup power to talk to me why are you not backing up your data you have hard drives like are your hard drives fried i don't this is not logical i i i fix yourself come on and it's like he was getting so worked up about this computer it was it was it was great it was entertaining um double max guard minus 100% max barrier that's why i keep this one because I keep going that sounds useful actually for anyone that is not a mage anyone that has guard can use that um so I'm gonna check out the sentinel plate that I forgot that I had because I'm pretty sure that's mage armor yep sentinel plate uh, unique light armor and it it's not elf only that's a surprise. I... I have to see Dorian in this, because his armor is so much worse. I have to see it. I thought this was elf only. Hang on. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so this looks... This looks alright on Solus. This looks utterly ridiculous on Dorian. Look at this armor. This is so... This is absurd. <laughs> that is funny as hell. Oh, Dorian, I'm so sorry. I'm... Ho <laughs> I can't. I can't. You're getting... You're getting your regular armor back. I can't handle that. <laughs> I like it on Solus. I can't handle that on Dorian. I can't. Ugh. Oh, but there is a sigil. I want to I want to transfer the sigil to his uh sentinel plate there. 
Do I have my crafting tables? Fuck yeah, I do. Cool. Modify armor. Get rid of that. I don't want to put Dorian in the in the res resolute warden armor that I have Solus wearing, but at the same time, he needs the help at the moment. I I I might have to do that. It's so ugly though. Uh, melee defense Sunder when hit seven willpower thirteen ma ooh thirteen magic. And I can transfer the uh, sigil. Fire resist I don't care about. Heal bonus, magic defense, range defense is what I'm losing. Eh. I have classes like 2B is for battler, number 2, 9S for scanner, number 9. Interesting. Okay. I am not ever going to pretend to understand a real military or a fictional military because mostly it confuses me. I don't I don't really get it. Actually, how does Nalthor's armor do? That's not very good. 47 max health, Sunder when hit. But what does it look like? Oh, that was that one! That's right. Okay, I love the look of this one. I used, um, I crafted armor like this for my last dwarf, and I really like the look of it, but that particular piece of armor is just not worth keeping because it's so weak. Um, that's right, I just got a new, uh, dagger, and I have coal in my party. Silencer. Which one is that? That is the first weird one. Okay. Both felt like playing a COD game and a legit RPG while playing it. Okay, well, the first one is going to turn me off of a game, just for the record. I have, like, not just no interest in Call of Duty, I have a specific disinterest in Call of Duty. So. Um... Lose my flanking damage and lose my 1% heal, but I gain 10% chance to use hidden blades on a hit. Hmm. Or I can swap it out for that one. I'm going to swap it out for the main hand. Because that's actually surprisingly not that much better. I want my heal bonus. I'm, like... Cole is super lopsided right now because Lady Jocasta's Revenge is 249 DPS and Silencer is almost double that. But at the same time, I want that heal bonus and my flanking damage bonus. So we're going to keep it. Oh, I never equipped this to Sarah. Shit. Um, Staff of Corruption versus Staff of the Void. This one's better. By a lot. I don't care about barrier damage bonus or fear. We're good. That one was my... No, it was not. I was just going to say that one was my backup for Solus, but it isn't because that was that one. Hmm. Very interesting. I'm going to strip that one and uh, put the Staff Blade on Solus's spare for right now so I can carry it around. Modify. And I can strip that, and strip that. Um, to silence her? No. Neither of these have grips. That's unfortunate. 
Mehmet's Warhammer. <sighs> I'm sure this is legendary, but it's so... Like... No. I literally do more damage with my little one-handed axe. I'm gonna keep it in case Bull can use it, but... I'm also going to keep that one in case it ends up being necessary, I guess. Yeah, okay. I'm going to keep that because otherwise that's going to take up space in my inventory as upgrades. Enhanced Ring of Armor Penetration. Everybody has better by now. Enhanced Amulet of Magic. Plus, plus five. Did I not have these yet? Huh. I usually have those equipped to all of my mages, but now I'm like, they've already got stuff? I'll worry about this later. Firm Dagger Grip. Twice. Six decks, eight decks. Interesting. Alright, um, yeah, we're gonna sell the, sell the valuables, now that we're down, oh, no, that one. Alright. I will craft stuff later. Crafting materials, I should be able to sell things here, I know I can buy things here, but... Well, no, that's a lie. I could buy things if I had them, if I had the gold, because look at this. You can buy up to 150 of all of your uh, dragon materials, dragon webbing, dragon scales, dragon bone, and wyvern scales. You can get 100 of, so I've got, I've got other priorities this playthrough, so we're not going to do that. COD thing is like the storytelling is sometimes done by calls from characters, feels formal but casual with interactions, every android has an operator android to look over her, all androids have personalities. Some android friends are in love with their operators. Interesting. Really feels like you are the character and this has always been what made me love the game. Fair enough. I mean, and that's, that's, that's one of the things that I 0% understand about Call of Duty because it doesn't like, it, it does not feel like a game to me. It feels like a war simulator. And, like, there's no plot. I don't care for games that make me feel like there's no plot. I couldn't get into it. Um, I should probably change my party up. That would be intelligent. Um... Who do I want down here, though? It would probably help to have an extra warrior. So... I don't really want Bull. That's a hell of a tarot card, though. Look at that. Damn. Comment someone made to me about Dark Souls. I didn't know these games had plot. Yeah! All I know about Dark Souls is that it's supposed to be super hard. Like, I don't know anything about the plot. And I haven't, I haven't really been able to catch many of your streams either, because you tend to stream in the afternoon by the time I'm either getting ready for or going to work. So, a ton of plot and lore. Excellent. Excellent. And, like, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly not telling you to change when you stream. It's just, you know, I have a weird work schedule, so... Um, God, who do I want? I guess I'll go Cole, Cassandra, and Solus. Been considering changing up a new stream. Interesting. I 
have a weird oh no you know you know the other thing um the other thing that happens sometimes is that you'll be streaming when i'm in class so it's like i have no free time right now i'm if i'm if i have free time i'm streaming so until i make my decision it won't change that is that is smart into a mountain. Uh, held by the stone then. I love that conversation. It's so dwarven. Because one of the one of the things that they that they talk about with dwarves is that they just assume that if something is not held in by the stone, it floats away into the sky because like for them, gravity is the stone. They don't have to worry about floating away into the sky. They don't like understand that the sky is a thing. They just like it it the logic is not there because they've always had the stone over their heads. So they just assume, or at least more old fashioned dwarves like Ren, assume that things just float up away into the sky without the stone to anchor them down. I I, I love that they went there. It's so goofy. Shaper Volta said you're a veteran of the blight. In the book series, I'm reading, they had a spaceborne human on a boat and said, "We're really high up, then, huh?" But he survived. I, I. Your axe long enough. You're bound to hit something. You Same type of mindset. Yeah, I. I'm not. This is all over. I'll have the I'm not really sure how. Most of Ren's stories end with On a boat, like, in the water, on a boat. And it, and he was interpreting it as high up. So, like, not understanding the ocean, I guess. Because of it, yeah, okay. Right, that makes more sense. I'd like to know more about the Legion of the Dead. Sorry, it took me a minute. I'm like, I don't understand how that's high up, especially if you're from space, but that's not what you were getting at. <laughs> One that can't be broken. We celebrate our own funerals before coming to the Deep Rose. As far as our families and Orzammar are concerned, we're already dead. I love his voice. That's quite the commitment. It isn't a glamorous life. Every legionnaire has their own reasons for joining. Fair. From the common criminal to the deep lord with illusions of grandeur. All are accepted. What about you? Why did you join? I had a responsibility. That's all you ever get? It's a literal miscomprehension, but a logical conclusion if you don't have the background of being used to the environment, such as living on the surface. Yep. Yep. And and like I said, it, 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 it just took me a minute to get where that misunderstanding would have come from, but it does make sense in that context. Fair enough. Vault has got the stones of a silent sister. Oh yeah, the silent sisters. I always forget about that because the silent sisters don't really come up in the lore very much, but that is a Basically, it is a dwarven order of monks who, um, all women monks, who rip out their tongues. And I forget why, honestly. There was, like, there was a reason, but there's no tongue. So, there was a, there was a character in, um, The Calling, one of the Dragon Age books, that was a silent sister. And then I believe she became a Grey Warden. It just, it was so, it was, it was a lot. It was a lot. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. It was, that was, that was, the shit that character went through. I want to talk to you, Volta. Why are you not letting me talk to you? There we go. The Inquisition is on everyone. Nier is about what is human. Now see if that has, if someone said that to me, I would have been like, fuck yeah, give me this game. 20% War Simulator, 20% Lore and Side Quest, 60% Main Quest. Since there are 17 chapters, it covers everything. Route A, you'll play the first 10 chapters as 2B. Route B, you play the first 5 chapters with a different perspective, and the other 5 as a new storyline. Route C, 10 through 17, 7 chapters as the A2. Completely new game, completely new storyline. Oof. What would have happened if Hitler won World War II? Now, now, now that, now we're back to why do you, why would I want to play that game? 
Hang on. Hang on. I haven't seen this before. Why was House Kadash exiled? This is... So, House Kadash is your dwarf's uh, house in Inquisition. So, I haven't seen this before, and I didn't... Okay, let's let's find out. Hang on. House Kadash was exiled from Orzammar long before my time, but no one has ever told me why. Does the Shade Parrot know? It's my understanding that your house tried to obtain information about a war golem during the first flight. Is that so wrong? That warrant exile. Their methods were considered offensive. House Kadash was feared long before it joined the Carta. I wish I could tell you more, but family histories are not my area of expertise. Okay, so I specifically wrote her a backstory that does not handle the whole born on the surface Carta Dwarf thing, but I really like that. That's interesting. I do like morally gray endings in games, but also, MH, here's the thing, I'm a Jew, and you just said to a Jew, it's like what would have happened if the most evil person in history, with the possible exception of the villain of the Purim story, by the way, happy Purim, that's today, um, won the war. That's not morally gray anymore. That's a problem. One become a shaper of memories. I was born with a keen stone sand. Well, no, I'm not I'm not saying Avery, I'm not saying that it has to do with World War II. MH did preface it with this is in like eleven thousand and something is the year, but it's but it's like that is specifically the worst dystopia that you could possibly compare it to, and I that that's a problem. Quite excited by the idea that these titans may exist. My connection to the stone allows me to hear it, but I can only listen. Titans. A2 is an equivalent to that. She just has more information, therefore her actions are incomprehensible to the player when you meet her at first. We call ourselves children of the stone. When you meet her first, okay. I. All right, no, I'm 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 confused now. <sighs> What's life like in Orzammar? I haven't lived in Orzammar for 3 years, but I receive updates. Is there anything in particular you'd like to know? Do you miss Orzammar, Shaper miss Volta? Yeah. I do sometimes. Particularly the easy access to a warm bath and clean clothes. But the importance of my work God, that the that line always kind of sticks with me. The, the the ease of access to a warm bath and clean clothes. Can you imagine not having... Like, she's basically homeless and just running around and doing her job all the time. It's nuts. How's the political climate in Orzammar? There have been riots due to food shortages, but they will pass. No doubt some deshers will try to use the situation for their own gain. But the king has a good hold over the assembly. I believe that. Evil looking character. Thanks for the insight, Shaper. Oh, well, she's out in the world doing stuff. Okay. I mean Like I said, I'm just I'm 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 slightly like I was I was assuming that uh the the comparison was like something different now Lupia. So now I'm like I don't actually understand what the what the whole thing is I don't I don't get it. Oh wait. Hang on. Wi Fi's having problems. Or it There we go. Alright, cool. I think. Yes, we're good. Okay. I'm gonna save again really quick because I just talked to uh Volta and Ren. All right, let's go. Elevator music. Ba -doo -ba -doo. 
I hope we don't run into an emissary. Oh. Now we definitely will. I take it emissaries are bad. Most dark spawn are mindless killing machines. Connected I have by no idea lights. what you meant. Yeah, I like. And emissaries are I don't intelligent. Really either, obviously. So. I'm just concerned. All right. It helps any of the music in here is good. That is good to know. Oh, bit right now. Bit right now. Stabilize. There we go. Now we're stable. All right. Yeah, no. Please, please eat food. Eat food. Food is good for you. I am I am I am always interested uh in good soundtracks, that is good to know. But go eat food. Ouch. I also hate shrieks. Moving is difficult. I wish you luck then. That's that's not a fun day. I wish you I wish you as much ease as you can reasonably expect. And then some. Good morning, alien. Having some bitrate issues right now. You missed a little bit of the lore, but you really haven't missed much in the way of plot for uh the descent. Alright. Oh yeah! So also, I have to be honest, every time I think of The Descent talking about this DLC, I, uh, I do often just go back to the movie The Descent, which is super fucked up and like it it's a it's a it's a creature horror movie and it's you know it's about spelunking so here's my claustrophobic ass watching this uh movie with my girlfriend at the time and it like it fucked me up i had nightmares i'm not going to lie <laughs> and then we go into the deep roads like okay all right this is fine and now we're going to fight dark spawn wonderful Dwarven mugs, pride of Nalthor. The words, let them eat steak, are etched into the side of this well-worn tankard. Did watch the last episode, VOD. Yeah, so, um, credit where due. A lot of that was due to, um, Balazar Nerixius there, my, my, my newest follower. So, that was, that was partly me going, yo, yo, I know you like Star Trek. Listen to this character's voice, and then just you know, co-nerding for a while. Kolg's journal. This gets this gets to be real interesting. What will I be playing next? Um I'm going to finish this playthrough of Inquisition and then I'm gonna be going into um Assassin's Creed Origins for a while because I don't want to be playing just Dragon Age all the time and also I never actually got very far in Assassin's Creed Origins. Like, I got to where the actual plot starts, and then I got distracted by doing that thing and running around and trying to get all the viewpoints. And and there's an actual, um... There's an actual achievement, which I think is just called Old Habits Die Hard. When you get all of the viewpoints in an area, I'm like, fuck you, I want my map. So, that's gonna be where I'm going next. Um... I really enjoy Bayek, and uh, there's there's some entertaining things that happen in the first part of the game where I'm like, now I understand. 
going to start too so I don't get spoilers watching the game. Well, you've got plenty of time, I'm sure, because it's going to take me probably a week, maybe two, to get through the rest of uh, Inquisition and the DLC. So you've got a little bit of time. It is hardly as if I'm going to be, you know, finishing this on Friday. So it's going to be... You got a little bit of time, and the way you play games is very different than the way I play games. Oh, how is the lore? Good morning, Earthling. I haven't seen you here before. Um, welcome. The lore is my favorite thing. And uh, as a matter of fact, um, I'm I'm in the middle of a, uh, a very, very, very late game DLC, which will have a lot of spoilers uh, in... in uh, later streams. I will probably not get to most of the really plot-heavy spoilers this stream, but this entire DLC, it's called The Descent, um, is entirely composed of just lore. It's not really relevant to uh, the the game itself in Inquisition, because it, it was released as kind of a post-game uh, DLC, but the the lore itself is really... The Descent DLC is entirely composed of world-building lore, so I really, really love this DLC. And it's really not MH's thing, as you can tell. Codex entries, bad. Storytelling is awesome. Um, I like the Codex entries because they actually sound like people talking. And that's just, that's, that's how it is when people, you know, write things that are not supposed to be like... This is, this is a, an essay on... Exactly how this happened. I'm going to tell you the history of the world. So it sounds a lot more like actual people just talking to each other or writing letters or something to each other and, and writing the way that they talk. So I really love the lore in Dragon Age. Um, you may you may see from my, my title down there that says Inquisitor number nine. I've played this game start to finish ten times. Or start to nearly finish because obviously I'm not done with this one. But yeah. I'm a fan. Perspective said is, reading doesn't belong in games. Yeah, well, I like trying to read out the codex entries, MH. I have fun with it. So, I'm not, I'm certainly not saying that you, uh, that you have, have an incorrect opinion, because it is just that, it's an opinion. But I like being able to dig up that stuff, because you can ignore it if you want. Or you can sit there and go, <gasps> I can learn about the Avar, which are kind of irrelevant to the game itself. And you get some of the lore that way. Reading is best in games. In that case, you are probably really going to enjoy uh, Dragon Age Inquisition for its lore. Um, I will say, if you want to play the whole series, I love the entire series, but the gameplay in the first two is not nearly as nice as in Inquisition. So... It's, it's, it's great. I love, like, Origins, a lot of the, uh, the lore and things is contained in codex entries and, and things that you can find and read. Um, Inquisition, there's some. It's not the majority of it. Um, maybe I'll have to get Inquisition. I'm a fan. I, I always will encourage this. So let me, let me get to, let me get to reading this codex entry while, while MH is sitting there going, yeah, codex entries. Kolg's journal, because this is this is uh this is something that you find four of these journal entries over the course of this DLC, and it it resembles something like a plot unto itself. So you can find out what happened in the in the in the the side quest as you're just hunting down these journal entries. Um, so Kolg's journal, a torn page from a journal. Stone blind Kolg, they chanted. Their grubby fingers pushed, pushed my face into the ground, scraped the flesh from my ear, spilled blood. Two thumbs made black spots in my vision. Their voices were loud, so loud, but I hear her the loudest, the stone. When they left me in the quiet dark, she remained. Her soft lullaby told me of a way I could return, a song of my own. Filled with mother's love, I gathered singing stone by hand. They said it would poison me, but mother would never do that. Not to her son. Within the melody, our secrets meant only for me. So, the singing stone. Here's some of your lore. The singing stone refers to lyrium. Lyrium is mined by dwarves. It is basically magic in mineral form. 
Lyrium potions are your mana potions in Dragon Age, so you mine the Lyrium, it gets refined into a potion, that's your magic. It is also highly toxic to anyone but dwarves if in its raw mineral form, and even dwarves have to be extremely careful not to be poisoned by it, and apparently driven nuts by it. So... Never edited an entry in Assassin's Creed Unity. My, my Unity stream was 50% reading stuff. Okay, but 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 I skipped over a lot of the a lot of the stuff in Unity because I know that a lot of it is just like some of that was me solving puzzles by reading the codex entries because I'm not super familiar with France. So I was like, wait, this puzzle requires me to be familiar with France. Son of a bitch. <sighs> So I read the codex entries, or the, the whatever the hell they're called in Unity, because now my brain is just stuck in Dragon Age. Um, I read some of the, the database entries so that I could solve the riddles. I swear. Let's put text, because it's easier to produce. Okay, but would, would you... Would you listen to all of the things and then remember all of the things and n not have to go back and re read some of it because I wouldn't remember those things. This door. There's something strange about it. Oh no, Looks I was like going for the gear game, not the not the hmm. thing. It's missing gears. We have to Okay. Scorched ancient gears. Through. Now we gotta find the gears to put in the door. Oh man <laughs> And then there's... Oh, God. Fucking... All right, so Genlocks... Oh, actually, speaking of lore, so here's the thing. Um, if you play all three uh, Dragon Age games... Hey, thanks for the follow, Earthling. We've got... That's interesting. We've got, we've got an Earthling and we've got Alien at heart, both in my stream at the same time. This is great. Um, so, one of the things that you will find about... Um, here we go. Dispel. Sweet. Um... The darkspawn that I'm fighting used to be people. That's that's one of the things about the lore in Dragon Age. All darkspawn monsters used to be people. So Genlocks used to be dwarves before they were tainted and turned into uh, the the critters that honestly they look a little bit like gorillas um, that I was just fighting. The um, yeah, if I have to go until 50, we're almost there. Um, the, let's see. The emissaries, I think... Were the emissaries elves or humans? I think the... I think emissaries are just mages in general. Um, but I'm not totally sure. Those don't stay lit. That's interesting. There's... So, no, I see. Okay. Okay, so... One. So, if the, if the braziers are going out, I'm assuming this is a puzzle that I was not aware was here. Um... Or maybe you can only have two lit at once? I'm confused. Oh! Hello! Alright, well, it... It opened. Weird. Alright, whatever. I'm gonna... I'm gonna go. Um... Oh, look! A third Scorched Ancient Gear. Of three. Let's head back to the door. Sure, we'll head back to the door once I check what's through this one. Explore all the things! Um, so Genlocks used to be dwarves. Um, Herlocks used to be humans for sure. Um, these are deep stalkers! They're adorable, stupid little ankle biters. Let me, let me see if I can actually see its face. I can't get that low. Never mind. Fine. They're cute. They're weird looking. They want to eat your face. Um... They make these adorable little noises. 
a lot of the critters in Dragon Age, which were not Darkspawn um, or demons, make really cute noises. Um, but, like, Dragon Age is a high fantasy uh, world, so a lot of the um, a lot of the monsters are just based on magic. Here we go. Kolg's Journal, number two of four. Notice, uh, Killing Me Softly popped up there. A blood-spattered page from a journal. The song is soft, but hard to crack. I hear the words. I can even taste them, but I cannot say them. Maybe Mother me needs me to remove my teeth. So that's pleasant. Um, Builder's Towers. So this is explaining the puzzle on the table that Ren... The, 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 the dude from the Legion of the Dead was like, what is that? Also, good morning, pals of Nerexius. Welcome. Welcome back. Um, Builder's Tower is such an old game, not just for children, no. Bill, big cannot cover small. Left moves right, piece by piece. They'll never know. They'll never find what happens when the towers move. I found it, but I have no need of it anymore. So... This, this is kind of a pain in the ass, I'm not going to lie, because I have to make sure that all of my, uh, all of my, all of my characters are out of my fucking way. And then I have to, I did this in the wrong order. Fuck. Hang on. Nyeh. 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 This is... It takes a while. It's kind of a pain. But, you know. Especially since you're just doing it with fucking camera angles. There we go. Yay! The first time I played that weird little puzzle, I genuinely just thought it was that I was supposed to do, um, like I was supposed to do all three. It's not just, but, but no, you literally just have to get it from the far left to the far right. It's annoying. Is that the Tower of Hanoi? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing that's another name for the silly little game that I just went through. I know that it, it is a game that exists, but that. I don't know. You served with him a long time. Oh, there we go. It was quick. And Bernat returned to the stone with honor. We should all be so lucky. It's all all right. To be upset. Holy shit, what's I'm in here? Too old to be upset. Oh, Ren. Stop that. I feel like texting games is more tolerable if it's well-written and atmospheric. I'd rather read in-character journal entries and be series than just this enemy's weakness is fire and physical attacks. I'm with you, alien. That is exactly how I feel about all of the Dragon Age codex entries. And also the database entries in um, Assassin's Creed. Because the ones in Assassin's Creed are all written by one of the characters. So he just, like, sasses you mid-database entry sometimes. It's like, alright, thanks, Sean. That was, that was, alright, sure. Uh, Wraithblood. Apparently this mug once belonged to someone named Amrun. Alright, I don't need iron, I don't need rash vine. We're good. I found the mug. Let's go. Did that messenger who came through camp have any news about Orzammar? The food shortage. More riots. There's unrest from Dust Town to the Diamond Quarters. Can't have the deep lords going hungry. Of course not. I made sure your mother and brother are safe. That was necessary. You're welcome. <laughs> I love listening to the banter in these games too, because you get shit like that. The Gates of Segramar. So this is explaining something that is going to come up for the rest of this DLC. Elaborate hand-carved stamps have formed the smudge ink smudged ink letters on this parchment into a symmetrical pattern. I obey the creator. My tasks are clear. Commands will be fulfilled. Barriers. Divisions to conquer. Mazes. Prisons to redeem. 
Carvings, wounds to heal. My three sacred duties. I must not fail. Doubt is my companion. Write down the questions. Hope to learn answers. Who weaves the sigil? What does it summon? How does it trigger? The creator knows everything. But still I ask, why am I chosen? That is the most cryptic message. I was going to say something earlier about if I had played, played the first two games before Inquisition, something, something. Okay, um... Honestly, I'm not sure. If you play the first two games, um, the the gameplay itself is somewhat lacking. Um, you get a lot of lore in the codex entries in the first two games. Inquisition is a little bit better balanced, I think, between gameplay and um, the actual, like, you get codex entries to learn the lore. Um, but I will say the, the, the gameplay, if you're, if you're specifically looking for, like, this game is beautifully crafted and the gameplay makes sense and if, and it's... Origins and 2 can be frustrating because they are significantly older and they pretty much just hadn't figured out their, their gameplay, uh, mechanics yet. I really like the way they got it together by Inquisition, but, like, the, the skill trees don't really make sense in Origins. They make, they make more sense in 2 in a different way than in Inquisition that I've never been able to quite explain. Um, but the the gameplay, like the skill trees in 2 make more sense than just the weird chart in Origins, but the, the gameplay aspect itself is still kind of lacking because they, like I said, they hadn't, it, it, it's almost like they hadn't figured out the engine for it yet. So everything is a little bit weird and stilted. But the plot is really beautifully done in 2, which is, you know, something that was mostly in Codex Entries and Origins. But um, 2 also was... The, the production time was cut short, so you get a lot of story and not really much gameplay. Like, if I spend 100 hours on average playing Dragon Age Inquisition, because I have no chill, so I do... I don't 100% the game, but I get close. So if I if I say I average 100 hours per playthrough for Dragon Age Inquisition to get almost everything done, which is about accurate, it takes me 80 hours to pretty much 100% Dragon Age 2. Every single time. I think the longest it took me was 85. Meanwhile, in Inquisition, I've had a couple of playthroughs that are like 120 hours. So... Yeah, it does it does make a little more sense. Um my stone sense leads the other way. Like Origins and Two set the stage. They they tell you why your Inquisitor has to do some of the things that they're doing, stuff like that. It's not necessarily things that you need to know, but it's things that would help to know. You don't understand why there's a conclave, why there needed to be one, why Varric is there, why Varric is everyone's favorite character ever. Two is more important to Inquisition than Origins. Yes, Origins kind of sets the sage for what is this world, what is unique about Thetis, which is the Dragon Age setting. I'm not fucking with you, that's where they got the name. Um, what is unique about Thetis as opposed to every other fantasy game? And two is more... Okay, what did they do with you know, okay, we've got we've got the dark spawn, we've got all of that explained, we've got Thetis. Now, what is the world going to be like for the next game? And oh, by the way, here's this small selection of characters that we're going to try to make you fall in love with because I love the characters and the story into it is clearly not a polished game, but it's so much fun. I like I tanked it twice in a month. I'm not I'm not even joking. Without Origins, you don't understand the devastation that happened in the prologue of Inquisition. Yeah, yeah, because that tells you you don't have you don't have the connection with the Temple of Sacred Ashes and you don't really have any context for what is a circle. Even in even in two, you don't really get a good idea of what the circles of Magi are for. So when it says, "Oh yeah, the circles of Magi have been dissolved," you're like, oh, "Okay, what does that mean?" So 
I, I, I really love the storytelling across the three games. I think it's worth it to play all three. But again, I will, I will absolutely not begrudge anyone for being like Origins is a fucking slog. But again, it's it's setting the stage for the world building, so I like it a lot. It's it's context. That's what that's what origin origins is. It's exactly what the title would imply. It is the origin of the story. <laughs> the Hawk family is fleeing Lothering. Why? What's an apostate? Uh-huh. What's a Templar? <laughs> What's a Templar? Why does he want you dead? Yep. What's a divine? What are we the Inquisitor of? Yeah. Well, I mean, what are we the Inquisitor of is kind of more during this game. Because what is an, what is the Inquisition kind of gets through... You don't get that until Inquisition, because there wasn't one since the last Exalted March of the Dales, etc., etc., etc. Or rather, 800 years. So, there should have been one during the Exalted March of the Dales, but there wasn't. Um... Anyway, did I see the video about the Dragon Age series as Bible books? No, I'm... Mm. I'm concerned, but okay. I have a thing on the screen. I'm going to read the thing on the screen. The gates of Sagramar. Some of the hand-stamped ink letters on this parchment are hastily smeared over each other. Only the following words are legible. The Creator provides tools. Burning wheels lower gates. I break the lines. Forge the broken sigil. Locked the way behind. Claws raking the door, scatter all the keys. What trails my steps? It does not matter. There is only forward. Origins Genesis, Dragon Age 2's original working title was literally Exodus. Uh, you know, that makes sense for several reasons. But, you know, there's also literally one more game and three more books there if you're just going by the Torah. Yeah. So. You sleep on the ground. <laughs> Releasing so Dragon Age 4 as Dragon Age numbers would confuse us all. That is a f that is a fact. <clears throat> oh shit! This is the Revenant. All right, hang on. Hold that thought. Shit's about to get real. Level 23 that Revenant. Here we go. Um, I will say that sometimes when you're right on top of your enemies, the, the, the targeting your enemy doesn't really help. Because you see the outline and you see through it. Uh, do I want to open a rift? I'm going to open a rift. Fuck it. Haha! This will be explained in the earlier game. That's, that's a thing. Cassandra, stop stealing my taunt. I want to taunt the enemies and get guard out of it. They're only based super loosely on the premises. Okay, I mean, I guess. But now I'm like... Genesis makes sense. Exodus makes sense. But, like, Dragon Age 4, Return of the Vault God. Accurate. Also, spoilers. Um, I should I should tell you, Earthling, if you're still hanging around, um, there will be a lot of spoilers in my chat, because almost everybody here has either played the game or does not plan to. So, um, there will be many spoilers. So... I will, I will absolutely not be offended if you're like, I'm out. Leviticus makes sense in a loose fashion. Yeah, yeah. Loosely, but like... And I mean, actually, if we follow, if we follow the way things have been going, I guess even uh, Deuteronomy would make sense later, because by the time we get to four, it's going to be like, all right, this is what's happening next. This is more plot shit. And then five is going to be probably getting back to the darkspawn. Because, you know, we've had barely any Darkspawn for two games. Like, you know, Darkspawn were the beginning of two, and now randomly kind of sort of at the end in an optional DLC, 
for three. So... Games are so big that even getting a few plot points doesn't ruin the experience, IMO. I agree. I'm the kind of person that's like, if getting a spoiler would ruin the plot for me, then the plot wasn't very good in the first place. But I, 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 will, I will mention that a couple of the spoilers that come out of my mouth a lot when I'm not thinking about it are pretty major. So, if that... I will, I will warn you of that. Yay, level 24. Um, it's like someone reading one sentence summary of each of those books and made a game based off that idea. Yeah, I guess. Watched a ton of spoilers for Dark Souls 2 and constantly get surprised and lost in the game. Yeah, and that's and that's one of the that's one of the things about large scale games like these is like even if you get a major spoiler, you don't necessarily know how it happened or how you're supposed to find out. So it's like you still you still even if you know what's about to happen, it's still gonna kick you in the gut. Save me from things like hitting the dragons that don't attack. Oh yeah. Oh wow. That's a uh, that's a thing right there. They hit hard. I friggin' bet. So you specifically have to aggro the dragons before they attack you. That's. I feel like you should go into it knowing that. That's. That's intense. Alright, here we go. More lore that has very little to do with the game. Warden Elisa's diary. I've never had a diary before. The wardens kept me too busy. But now I'm dying, and there's no one to talk to. I'm alone with the music in my head growing louder. I always wondered how wardens knew when they heard the calling. I asked Liam once after too many drinks. You'll know, he said, and I did. At first, it was just a whisper. A creak in the door hinge I could put off oiling. But soon all I could hear was the music. It was there when I swung my staff and wiped the sweat from my brow. It lingered in Liam's laughter and stalked my dreams. I can't explain the sound, the song. But I knew. It's a poison that grows in the mind, then consumes the body. I came here to die. In death, sacrifice. But I won't go quietly. I cut through the Darkspawn horde, expecting to find only more of them the deeper I travelled. But nothing has matched my expectations. Deep roads brought to mind Darkspawn, dwarven ruins, caverns, and death. But there's an entire underground world here. Just today, I came across plants with lyrium-streaked veins. I took a bath in a lake that held crisp, fresh water and cautious animals, large and small, that I'd never seen before. I can't be the first warden to witness such wonders. I was distracted by the curiosities yesterday. Was it yesterday? I let my guard down, got comfortable. Easy to do when you know death is inevitable. But then I stumbled across something horrible. I smelled it before I saw it. Bodies. Herlocks. Genlocks. Creatures I didn't recognize. Hundreds of them mutilated, tortured, and thrown into pits. I ran. Didn't see the hole. Can't move my legs. They look like they should hurt, but I can't feel it. The music is too loud, the hunger too strong. I can still crawl. I don't want to die like this. Elisa's sketch of the deep roads. This is like three floors down. So, she got a real long way. Doesn't have a difficulty slider as far as I know. It, it definitely, they definitely all have it. Um, MH, the... The difficulty, uh, quote-unquote, slider, you choose that when you make your Inquisitor. So it has the, the weird little uh, scrolly ma thing through the tarot cards when you're creating your Inquisitor. It tells you to also choose a difficulty level. And then uh, later you can... You can't... I don't think you can up the difficulty in options, but you can lower the difficulty later in the options menu. Like, if you're getting your ass kicked consistently, that's backwards. Hang on. Hang on. Where am I going? Oh, no, I do need... I need to go that way. That's where I need to go. So back through here. And then that way. Okay, yes, good. Also, I would like to point out something that I just made use of. When you go to your quest map, you have this, which is marking your, uh, your mission, and you can change whichever mission is... Uh, actually selected. Um, 
so that gold thing is your is your mission uh, marker, but you can also make a marker on the map to be like, I need to go in this direction next, or I need to go back in that direction, so that you don't get super lost if the map is all twisty and turny, and then you see... Hold that thought. You can see the, um, the marker on the map once you get to it. It's... I think I put the map marker off the map by accident. Off the, uh, walkable... Uh, spots of the map. So. Fuck you! Yeah! I'm falling back. Ah, Cassandra, why are you dying? Why did you die? Solus, you want to raise the other warrior? Because that'd be great. Ouch. Solus! Solus, what are you doing? Why are you slacking? You can also switch characters if, you're, if your healer is fucking slacking off. There we go. Oh yeah, okay. Genlocks, man. Yeah, Genlock. Why? Cassandra, why? That was not the button I wanted to press. Oh man, and those take forever to fucking... Can I stone fist this motherfucker? I can. Cool. Alright. I'm gonna barrier all of my all of my folks here. And then I'm gonna see if the goddamn revival spell will reset itself here. There we go. God damn, Cassandra, why are you bad at this? You're a Templar. I mean, Seeker, technically. Templar specialization, Seeker in actuality. You're supposed to be better than this. God. Yeah. Fuck you. Vegans can't eat butter but margarine. Yeah, um, because butter is made with milk. So, someone that cares about animal products being in their food for whatever reason will not eat milk or most uh, pastries unless they're specifically made, you know, specially with vegan ingredients. He means that as a compliment. You're famous, even down here. Oh no, I see what I did. You killed a dragon. A couple. I have. It was quite the battle. I can't even imagine. Tell me about their teeth. Um, yeah, the thing about vegan pastries is that they have to be they have to be made with vegan ingredients. So a lot of pastries are made with either milk or eggs. I've heard they so they won't eat them. Fire, and their scales have different colors and patterns. Careful, Red. I believe you're drooling. God damn it. Get out of the corner, I need to go over there. There's a gear. Ren, get out of my way. Please. Thank you. Dough without eggs. Yep. Yep. No hunt. Oh, that's right! So, that's that one just drives me crazy. I, like... If you're going to use fucking agave instead, that is actually harmful to the environment. You are a shitty vegan. But they're like, ooh, but it was produced by bees, so it's a fucking animal product. Ugh. I hate that so much. It's like, okay, if you want to be picky, everything is produced by bees because they're pollinators. But you don't apply the same logic to plants that you're eating, so what's the point? It's just, it's people that are that are vegan for quote-unquote ethical reasons just utterly boggle me. I don't understand. Like, if it's a health thing, okay, fine. 
If you have decided that that is best for your health, I understand. I can't eat meat. But god damn, I don't get it. If they're trying to be like, ooh, I'm gonna be ethical. No, that's not, that's not correct. That's not how that works. Ugh. Okay, so, um, I just saved right here because this particular spot is somewhere that I have had a lot of glitchy bullshit. So I'm gonna try to head that off. And hope it doesn't fuck up what I'm about to do. Oh look, an ogre! Oh man. Ow. It's an ogre, but it's not an ogre alpha! Fuck, but it's level 24. Okay. The last one was level 23, which is fine, and shouldn't make as big of a difference as it absolutely does. Vegan is no animal products at all. Other types of vegetarians exist, exactly, like me, with different restrictions. Some only avoid meat, but not eggs. Me. Me. Bees produce honey for no reason except to excrete. Um, bees, so bees produce honey because it is actually nutrition for them, but they overproduce it. Like, there's a reason beekeepers are, like, always trying to take the honey out of their hives, because they will genuinely, they will, they will overproduce honey to the point where they suffocate the hive. So, they need to be able to, and, like, bees that are, I think wild bees usually have, like, other critters legit just stealing their honey, so they don't die as easily, but in in more controlled environments, that's how people get honey, is they go, oh yeah, all right, well, you're gonna overproduce this anyway, let's take some of the excess because it's delicious. That's, that's what I just said, MH. In the wild, they have other critters that are breaking into their hives and stealing the honey. The difference is um, the other critters might damage the hive so something... Put me the fuck down, you asshole. Something like that, um... They, they can rebuild the hive, obviously, but, like, beekeepers are protecting the, the infrastru infrastructure of the hive while they do it because of the way the, um... The... Habitats are constructed. Yes, and also swarms. That's more about bee behavior than I than I ever remember as a thing. But yes, they will an overcrowded hive, they will just anger at each other forever. Okay, well, this is a pain in the ass. Put me down. Okay. That's a problem. I have two potions. This is a problem. I'm gonna make sure this doesn't fuck up my, uh... Oh, God damn it! Put me down! Fuck off. I really should just open a rift in your skull, but at this point I'm like, this is an insult. I don't have to open a rift in your skull. Fuck you. Haha! -ha! Yeah, Sh Shrek's being a dick. Absolutely. I, the, the ogres in this game are like... They are some of the worst enemies to get stuck with. Because they just take forever. It's not anywhere near as bad as like the, the dark spawn emissaries. So the floaty motherfucker that I was dealing with earlier, that one's pretty nasty. But... Uh, and there's a, there's a point later on in this DLC where you have, I believe, two ogres and at least one, I believe three, Darkspawn Emissaries to deal with over the course of several waves of enemies. It is the worst. All right, now we got plot. Let's make sure it doesn't break. Um, I think it's busted. Am 
am I just not allowed to come down to this floor first? Like... Did I have to wait for the battle to dissipate? Do I have to leave and come back? I'm like, I don't want to interact with anything else in case this is irrevocably fucked up. Sometimes if you if you get to the point where the 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 part of the map that you're going to is no longer in your mini map, it'll be fine. Let's see if that worked. Nope. There's supposed to be... God damn it. All right. Hang on. Okay. We're going to go back here. Um, I'm going to actually... From there, I'm going to teleport back to the camp and get some better characters for this fight. Um... Luckily, I know that it does that, so I'm not, like, trying to save every three seconds and just utterly fucking myself over. But... The one goddamn thing. Um, where's my... Party change horn. There we go. So maybe we'll go bull this time. Coal, bull, and solace. I mean, I don't know. Give it a shot. Um, and I haven't reached the next fast travel point, so we gotta do this on foot. Either it has to take minutes or one shot you in order to be a boss mob. I know. I'm I'm I've had this glitch at least half of the times that I have played this DLC. So at this point, I know when it happens. I'm annoyed. Um, so, given given MH mentioned this earlier, I am um, relatively close to reaching affiliate on Twitch. Um, I just... Uh, Earthling there is my 45th follower, and I am required to have 50, so... Five more! Um, there's also a few other things, like you have to stream a certain amount of days in a month, which I already do. You have to have an average of at least three uh, viewers per stream, which... I usually hover right around that average, so that that part might be uh, a little bit interesting to try to sustain between now and the uh, five more followers, but that's, that's where I'm at right now. Um, I'm going to be trying to make my own emotes so that by the time I get to affiliate, y'all will have a couple of emotes, or well, I think it's, I think it's one for affiliate. Um, and then you get more emote slots later on, but that that's I don't know. I haven't I haven't looked closely into that because I'm like I need to focus on making the one first. Um Yes. So, um affiliate is basically just um when you when you go onto a channel and there are um subs available, you can subscribe to the person. Um you can drop them bits uh on Twitch, you can use their emotes. All of that means that they are an affiliate. So I don't have any of that available yet because I'm a new enough streamer and a small enough streamer that I haven't gotten to that point. Um, and then there's partner, which I don't think I'm going to go for because that's like so much. And I'm also going to college. So that's not likely to be in the cards for a very long time, if at all. But... All right, let's see if we can do this from up here. Can I piss you off from up here? Because I think... I think the times that it hasn't glitched have been the times when I just haven't gone down there. Like, 
the 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 NPCs can go down there to fight, but I don't think my Inquisitor can go down onto that floor and have it not glitch. Sort order by lowest viewer count in Twitch and you get instant depression. What? I hope that I I'm I'm not Something something is not processing about that sentence for me, MH. Tons and tons of people with zero viewers. Oh, yeah, no, it's like. And then the other the other thing with me right now is um, there are days when I'm right at three, but I've had problems with bots, so I don't know how many of those are bots. I don't know how many of those are lurkers. So I, I'm not sure how close I actually am. So, and also, I think one of the I think one of the followers that I have is somebody that I banned. So I think technically that uh, I I I assume that that doesn't count. So technically, I'm probably, for all intents and purposes, I'm probably actually at 44 followers. But like I said, I'm assuming that that doesn't count for what they're gonna look at. The Kingdom Hearts kiddo. Um, no, it was a child that was. First of all, there. I'm. I am a mature channel. I don't want kids that are not old enough to be on Twitch in the first place on my channel at all. First of all, and if you're here, I'm assuming that you are either of the age of majority or of the age where your mom and dad said this is okay. You can watch this thing. That is. That is my assumption going into this channel. Like. That's that's the thing. I have a mature audience's filter on my channel for a reason. Because of some of the stuff that comes up when I'm talking, you know? This is not This is not a stream for kids. This is not a stream for people that can't handle political bullshit and or me swearing like a fucking sailor. So I have the mature content filter on. And I had an 11-year-old stop in at my channel when I was playing fucking Assassin's Creed of all things. Like Eleven is not old enough to be on Twitch, according to the terms of service. You are literally not old enough to be here. And also, I'm a mature channel. Go away, child. Like... That is explicitly against all of the rules. Go home. You do not belong here. I have zero problem with kids in, you know, places that are supposed to be for kids. This is supposed to be not for kids. That's my thing. You know, if if mom and dad say it's okay, great, fantastic. But this, no. I don't want an 11-year-old on my channel. That is, I'm not, I am not going to be responsible for an 11-year-old being on my channel <laughs> and hearing all of the shit that I'm talking about and watching games that I'm playing and, you know, actual literal murder on screen, including, you know, when I'm not fighting monsters, when I'm just running around and assassinating people in fucking Assassin's Creed. That is not content for kids. Like, no. Yeah, I think the rating of that game is like... I don't know if it's NC-17 or if it's, like... It's not... It's not... An 11-year-old is not... Where you... No. Just no. Alright, now I'm annoyed. Because it's glitching again. And I didn't go down. Maybe... What I need to do... is run away from it in a different direction. Go a little bit further. Well, no, not even just Twitch police, but even even if it was something like... The, the problem is, the way Twitch works... There we go. I don't care about that. Could this be Tighedron? 
I'm gonna let Volta over. nerd about this for a little bit. See their torches. Yay, we found Hadron Tig. Fight of our lives. Correct. Um the other the other thing about that is like children really cannot be held accountable for their presence on the internet. But at the same time, who's gonna be held accountable for some child being on a mature Twitch channel? The streamer. I'm not fucking dealing with that. I'm not a parent, and I don't plan to be. There we go. Now I can... You know what? I don't even think that was a glitch. I think it's because there was that one Genlock that I missed. I didn't have to do that twice. Shit. All right. It's fine. I figured it out for next time. I missed an enemy. I didn't even tell who they were. I'm sorry, Ren. Join the Legion knowing you're already dead. You don't fear the killing blow. We rest in the stone and pass our strength back to her. That's our reward. But the Darkspawn defiled these soldiers. They can't return to the stone. They'd only weaken her. This scene just, just, this scene, this scene really... <sighs> I have a lot of rage. I don't know if y'all are, are are aware of that. I have a lot of rage. <laughs> the other dwarf, Volta, is amazing. I love her. We'll make the darkspawn pay for what they've done. I've killed so many. Excuse me. Every goodness. time I stare into their black eyes, I know one day I won't be quick enough. I just love listening to him talk. It's the truth, Volta. I'm going to die down here. I can only hope it won't be like this. We'll burn the remains. Honor them with flame. We got this. Also, blood spots everywhere. Parents can be weird about what they think their kids will be okay with. They make child-sized Assassin's Creed costumes for Halloween. Somebody bought their four-year-old to Avengers Affinity War, and he was having a bad time even before the snap. I fucking bet. Oh my god. Okay, you know what, MH? Fight me. Tali is adorable. I made her exactly the way I wanted to. Also, gender is fake. Speaking of things that I don't want to bother addressing with an 11-year-old, holy shit, can you fucking imagine? Not my job. I'm not a parent. Oh, wait, actually, hang on. No, I can't do this from here. I have to do it from the other end. That sucks. Okay. There's a there's an expedition there to uh to get that access to Hadron Tig that um Falta was just nerding about. Okay, actually, while I'm while I'm still up here somewhere, I have to check. Um, Sacrificial Gates of Segramar. Warden Elsa's sketch. Oh, I thought that was Elisa, not Elsa, but okay. Um, Holding the Deep Roads. Where? It's in Collections, isn't it? It's in Collections. There we go. Gears in the Deep Roads. Darkspawn Warrens. I believe that's where I am. And this says that I missed two gears. Hmm. The internet has become the free babysitting service. Well, you know what? That's... That is absolutely not my job. Just like video games and TV before it. Yeah, for some people, that's for sure. I Like I said, I'm not... I'm certainly not saying that kids shouldn't be playing video games or kids shouldn't be, like, whatever. That's not... That's not my job to figure out. I'm not a parent. Fuck off. Um, but it is, like, don't let your child unsupervised onto a stream that is specifically supposed to be for mature individuals. Like, that's... No. Fuck off. I'm not a babysitter. I'm not a parent. I'm not dealing with that. That's not my job. Um, like, don't get me wrong, I teach kids as part of my job. 
I love teaching kids, but at that, like, in that environment, that's, that's what I'm there for. Like, you are supposed to come in and leave your children in, in my, uh, supervised care for an hour or so, and then they go home. Like, that's, that's the point. Hang on, I'm, I'm also looking for a, a map that I have on my iPad that I can't pull up at the moment. Because I have the gears that I need in... There we go. Oh, right, because two of them are down that ramp. Duh. No, wait, that's... Hang on, that's Hedron Tyke. Hang on. Darkspawn more... Oh, no, no. All right, that is correct. That is correct. Okay. Also the schools. Yeah, so that's... that Again, it's like, that's what you're supposed to do. That's what it's for. This... This is me streaming because I can, because I'm a nerd, for, you know, people of similar or, you know, greater maturity, because I'm sure there are people that are more mature than I am that watch my streams. Um... Like, this is specifically for mature individuals, mostly adults, to watch me play video games and be entertained by how bad I am at them. And, you know, not kids. This is not for kids. I mean, in the sense, parents drop kids in front of a screen and stop supervising without doing any research about what will be on the screen. Let kids play Mario Brothers. Maybe don't let them play Grand Theft Auto until they're old enough. Right? Ugh. God. Like... If you, if you think that that is something that your child can handle, okay, fine. I'm not a parent. I'm not going to argue with you. But, Keep your mouth closed when fighting dark spot. you know, the blood's poison. there's, there's a couple of, there was this Carter boy. <sighs> I don't think the that there is like an awful lot of merit right. to, oh, if your child watches the murder, they're going to grow up happen. to be violent. No, that's not the point. But the point is, for me, if they're seeing something with a significant amount of blood in it, that's maybe gonna do something to how they process things like that in real life. Like, it's not necessarily going to make them violent. I, I think that's bullshit. That's been, that's been said about tons of things for ages, and there's absolutely no support for it but if i say you know if i say like i'm playing a horror game so okay so now the kid's gonna be afraid of zombies and then you get to deal with that or I got, like, let's let's use Resident Evil as an example, because I really want to stream Resident Evil, but I can't do it until I have a capture card, because all of my Resident Evil games are not PS4. Anyway, so, let's say I'm streaming Resident Evil 4, for example. I have my favorite Resident Evil character running around, shooting zombies, and then they're like, oh, all right, um, guns, that's a, that's a thing. Maybe they don't understand fully how guns work yet. And you have a kid that's, you know, learning about guns and then might decide that, you know, dad's unlocked gun safe because this is fucking America and people just have those. Is something to be interested in. And, you know, first of all, if you have weapons, fucking lock them up and keep them away from your children. Certainly until they're old enough to train with them. But, like... Let's say without stupid shit like that. Kid's gonna be afraid of zombies. Or the kid's gonna see, you know, Leon getting chainsawed in half because I wasn't fast enough with the fucking chainsaw guys. I hate those so much. I hate chainsaws. I hate that noise. I hate those enemies. They bug me. But I am 27 and can handle it. What happens when your child sees... You know, somebody getting chainsawed in half on a video game. That's not... That's going to be nightmares, at least. You know? I do not find anything meritable about... Oh, your kid watched violence, so now they're going to be violent. No. I do find a little bit of merit with your kid, you know, maybe is 
a curious child, like 99% of children, and doesn't necessarily know the rules if you don't tell them the rules. You know? Shit like that. Ugh. No, and that's and and Avery, I think I think you were probably away from your keyboard when I when I started saying this, but that's kind of what I'm getting at. If there is a child on my stream and I am even remotely aware that this person might not be of the age of majority, I am obligated to ban them from my stream or I get in trouble. And, like, I will always give someone the chance to leave, but if I see them come into my chat, or if I suspect that it, it's, you know, someone that is too young to be here, I have to ban them. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's exactly where I'm at, Avery. But it's like, I, I had to ban an 11-year-old from my stream, and, I, and this, this all started because I was like, I don't think I technically have 45 followers, because one of those was that 11-year-old that I had to ban while I was playing fucking Assassin's Creed, of all things. Like, no, this is not a game that you should be watching, and also, you do not belong on my mature channel. Leave. So, you know, yeah. Yeah, and and MH, what you're what I think you're getting at is the part that I don't think has any merit at all. Like idolize violence. No, I don't I don't think that anybody would look at a video game and actually think that, you know, ooh, violence is cool. No. That's not like who wants to get punched in the face? At minimum. Okay, now make that a hundred thousand times worse. Violent video games don't make people violent. You know. That's not that's not something that I even remotely believe is true. Because, man, let me tell ya, I play some fucking violent video games. The least I I hate fighting. I'm a martial arts instructor as my job. And unless I am sparring, like, even when I'm sparring sometimes, which is, you know, light contact, I hate hitting people. So much. Like, there's, there's a handful of people that I like fighting because, you know, I'm not afraid to hurt them, and I know that I will learn from fighting them. But we're sparring. It's all light contact. It None of it is going to be, you know, someone's hurting someone. Learn karate so I wouldn't have to fight. Right? Exactly. And, and, and also what you said before that. Exactly. What matters if someone we know as a child comes in here, their parents see and get offended, and then we're up on police charges. That's bullshit. Like... If I know that there's a child here, they get banned. That's it. This is not a place for children. And I have my channel clearly marked as not a place for children. For a reason. No, no, MH. That's how you make video games suck. Like, the, the, the point of video games is to enjoy it. I'm certainly not saying that... Like, you should make, like, violence fun, because that's not the point, but, like, there's, there's a certain amount of fun that goes into triumphing over evil in the way that evil is literally monsters. Like, that is fun. That is, you know... COD, yeah, I don't like war games. Like, games that are just about war and are realistic are exactly the opposite of what I want. So, you can you can have your own opinions on that, and mine are not good. Hate the way we consider violence more acceptable than nudity, but that's a different argument. Right? Oh my fucking god. So, like, I'm gonna read this really quick, because it's on my screen, and I know myself. I will just start ranting. Uh, These hand-stamped smudged ink letters are barely legible, overlapping each other in tight spirals on the parchment. Redemption should follow sacrifice. The creator promised me. I end without hope. 
Every command a lie, each task a trap. Divided, I am conquered. The sigil breaks me. Yeah, so the... the uh, Violence being more acceptable than nudity is utterly bullshit. And it is entirely based in Christianity being like, But sex is a sin! Okay, so... So is murder. So is, you know, violence. In your in your own canon, all of these other things are at least as bad, if not worse. And you're gonna be upset about some titties when there's people, like, killing each other in the name of your religion? Like, how about fix yourself before, like... What's, what's that, what's that, what's that quote? Let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Is that how that's said? Like, worry about your own self. Fix your own shit before you start going on literal crusades. I have a problem with hypocrisy. I've heard encouraging things about your progress topside. That you're bringing order to the chaos. That's what they tell me. I have a problem with liars, and I have a problem with people that have their priorities skewed. And don't get me wrong, I'm certainly not saying that Christians are just like that, because a lot of them have, you know, gotten over it and are not. But also, there are also games where you play a character that isn't good, that these don't make you a bad person. The Darkness 2 read that series when I was in high school. It wasn't for children. I knew what Jackie was about and what was going to happen in the game. Yeah, that, like... The, the, the thing about video games is that they are sometimes a way to explore things that you literally do not ever want to happen in real life. In any capacity, on any level, but you get to see how, like, for example, spoilers, if I decide that I want to side with Kunari and kill the Chargers, you get to see how that affects the rest of the game. You get to see how the Iron Bull continues receiving his reports from the Ben Hasra, and then he turns on you in Trespasser because he's like, all right, well, you murdered, you, you let my friends die, and my loyalty is to the Kune, not to you. But then, you know, if you, if you take the quote-unquote good ending there if you if you save the chargers if you don't side with the kune you lose all of their reports you lose access to all of the information that they had and the iron bull loses his connection to his original people but the chargers are alive you get a scene with you know all of the chargers like you saved people instead of some political thing. Like, you did the good thing, but there's a downside, because there's never something that is purely good or purely bad. And you get to explore that in a video game where nobody actually gets hurt. Yes, it takes until Trespasser, Avery, but, but by the time you get to Trespasser, where the Kunari are running everything anyway, Bull will betray you if you do not save the Chargers. Because he's connected to the Kune still. He hasn't lost his connection to his people. So he goes with his people over, you know, the 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 organization that he joined later. It's very interesting. Does not saving the Chargers break the romance? I don't think so. Not not until Trespasser, when he just straight up tries to murder you, and you have to kill him. If he's in your party, he will try to kill you. So, knowing this, I intentionally put him in my party. Because I was like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to see exactly what would happen. Yep, nope. No, no, no romance break there. I'm sure there's a niche somewhere for a military micromanagement game where all the violence happens off-screen, like at the War Table missions, and the the player action is supply lines and deployment. Quartermaster Sim. Probably. I feel like that's just the Civilization games, Alien. 
because the the I don't know a lot about the Civ games, but everything that everybody says is like, oh, I I have this war going on, and and these historical characters are involved, and all of this shit. So that's that's the impression that I get about. Hey, I did it right. That's the Civ series. So, that's like super not my thing. I don't I don't want to be dealing with all of that nonsense any more than I want to actually be dealing with murdering people in a non like fictionalized manner like Assassin's Creed is one thing but you know Age of Empires okay fair enough I that one I don't hear talked about as much I hear about I hear a lot about the Civ games because there's um I follow a lot of Zelda fun people and uh a lot of a lot of the Zelda fun streamers uh, like the Civilization games, and 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 even if it's not specifically the Zelda fun people, their um, their followers do. Age of Empires is very like Civ in the gameplay aspects. Fair enough. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> Seriously, keep your guard up. They'll use your tongue as jewelry. Of course Bull has a response to that. It makes sense that Bull would have a response to that. But that didn't occur to me. I don't think I've ever had Iron Bull in this DLC in my party. Have fun, MH. I will probably not be here when you get back. Because it's 12.30, so I am reaching not quite the end, but close to the end of where I'm going to be... Uh, streaming here. There's a door, and I forgot to look at it, but it's literally right there, and it just brings you through here. Might drop some screenshots in Discord. Absolutely. You are free to do this. I hope you have fun. Yay! Alright, have fun, Avery. I may end up raiding you shortly. Because cause you're here. Either way, have fun, y'all that are leaving to do other games. I'm going to try to find the edge of this spot that I always lose. And get up to that other um, gear. But I don't remember how to get there. Cause I ha oh, that's right, because I have to go up over here. I started to do that too, and then I was like, no... I've I've managed to 100% this, but that's part of the reason I have my um my iPad because I have my my silly little extra maps which hopefully, you know, I I may be able to actually show you guys and leave up on my screen once I get a capture card um so that I can just show you what I did to the maps. Um but I have I have my other my other maps on my screen so that I can figure out where everything is. But that's on my iPad at the moment. I could pull it up on my MacBook, but that's just one more thing at the moment. Okay. And down we go. Okay. Cool. Um. Hate the Storm Coast map. I know, because you, like, you get stuck in places, and then you're like, hang on, how do I get back to this other thing? Nope, nope, not like that. Can never find my way on it, and I've cleared it entirely twice. Yeah. So that's, um, there is a, uh, a, a site that might help you. Um, I think I dropped it in your stream a while back. I think it's called, I think it's just called Game Maps. And it will give you all of the, uh, as a matter of fact, that's most of the maps that I use are from that site. I love the Western approach. I think it's I think it's really fun. Used a map and still had trouble. Well, I don't know. Like I said, the 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 game maps site has enough detail that I find it useful. Um, because it has like sometimes it'll have arrows between you know where you're where you are and where you need to go and all that shit so the the forbidden oasis is a bitch though stupid tiny markers for projects that don't show up until you're sitting on them ah uh, yeah that's that's also a thing um 
what was I just... I need to go in here, and I need to find my chart with... Where is it? I have... Ah, Sacrificial Gates of Sagamar. There we go. How many gears are in... Four. The third gate has four. Is that the one right here, or is that a different one? First and third. So that might be two, actually. And the second gate has fewer gears that you need. So... We're gonna we're gonna zip back around and get that uh gate. Gonna head on out. All right, have fun, Avery. Like I said, I will I will probably see you shortly. Cause I'm I'm at the point where I'm like I should end stream soon, but I want to get to the next um camp at least. So on broken knees shouldn't be complete. Oh yes, it should. I went by that. That's right. Okay, so back around here. This is my other gate. And I didn't come close enough to see the gears. Uh, the words on this torn parchment are handwritten in ink as rusty as dried blood. Terrible to sacrifice one's own child with a lie. I prayed on perfectly trusting faith, but how could I explain my desperation? Deep roads wind in deceitful spirals, concealing the sigil from casual observance. I could not discern its true pattern until I, until I stood in the fade and gazed down upon the vast malevolent engraving. Hang on. Hang the fuck on. Is this a dwarf? Standing in the fade? I am now five times as confused as I was. Okay. Um... Its artist remains unknown, but its horrifying intent was all too clear, as was my necessity. I only wish it had not cost you, my only child. I could not build the locked barriers that would carve the marks and break the sigil. You alone could save us all, but only by destroying yourself, and I let you do it. Forgive me. The rest of the text is illegible scratches. The lines and swirls form a disturbing pattern if stared at too long. All right, I'm making I'm making a weird um, connection all of a sudden. Sandal. Sandal, who is brilliant and perfect with runes and enchantment. Enchantment. It doesn't say that this child died. It said that it quote unquote cost a child. What if that was Sandal? What if Sandal was originally a, you know, perfectly quote-unquote normal, I hate that word, but a, a, you know, typical dwarf, and then ended up doing all of this shit with lyrium and nonsense and ended up as he is now, and gained his disability. What the fuck if? Oh, look! A corrupted spider. Take this shit out. Let's go. There's also, there's also something to be said there for assuming that the disabled character specifically gained a disability, and that bothers me too, for reasons that I'm not sure I can articulate, so it's entirely possible slash probable that, you know, the answer is fucking no, but also this is Dragon Age. I'm not going to assume that they did the, uh, politically correct thing that isn't also ableist. I'm never going to assume that. Because they've 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 made some mistakes in the past. Yeah. 
Fuck you, fight me. Did I miss one of Kolg's journals? Because I think this is number four. And it's of four, so I think that's... Kolg's journal, a crumpled page from a journal. Mother holds me when I sleep. Warm, so warm. Her rhythm flows through my throat, burning until the miners and their fat, cruel hands are a distant memory. Kolg is memory. I am the sun. The words come in waves. I will drown in them for her. Oh, or maybe it was just Kolg. But Kolg, the way those journal entries run, it implies to me that Mother, the Mother that he talks about, is the stone, not, you know, an actual sentient Mother. Um, so I'm gonna check out my journal real quick. Because I think... I did! I missed a journal page! Shit! And now I'm like, there are, um, this, this, um, the, the, the deep roads in the descent is one of the only places where that site that I mentioned, I think it's just called Game Maps, didn't have helpful updated maps with, like, all of your quest markers on them. So now I'm like, I always miss one of the... one of the journal entries. I'm not down there yet. That's the floor that I'm on. And I don't have these marked down. So now I'm like, I missed one of Kolg's journal entries. This is gonna drive me crazy. Um... I'm gonna Google this really quick, because now I'm like, I fucked up. Darkspawn Warrens and the Runes of Hadron Ty- Oh, wait a minute. Just before- Nope, okay, I haven't gotten to the fourth one yet. That's why. I see. Alright, that's fine. I do this every time. Anyway. Um, I'm gonna remark the descent here. Where is my camp, actually, before I do that? That's down here. Oh. Oh no. Hang on. Okay. I'm not going to get to the other camp today. That is probably going to be um a good chunk of my next stream because I've just looked at my uh my my other map that's actually filled in. There is no fucking way I'm going to get to that today. Standing in the Fade Narrator didn't seem like a dwarf to me. Maybe a scholar or explorer from the surface. I mean, that's... It's hard to tell, really, because... They they imply that nobody else has been down here, right? Nobody else has come to this part of the Deep Roads. So it must be a dwarf, except... You know, so, like, the way, the way that I was reading it might... It's, it's hard to tell. That's the problem. You don't get enough information to make any conclusions. So, it's a challenge. It's a thing. Alright, so. I'm going to... I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to try really hard not to go through that archway, because that's where shit's going to get real. We're going to go this way. We're going to grab a couple of spots where we can unlock expeditions. One of them is, like, right there. But apparently I'm not close enough yet to... <laughs> there we go. Central bridge operation available. Um, if I had more time, I would go off and uh, 
fix up, grab a couple of other um, expedition markers, but I am absolutely not going to have time to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect all of the stuff from over here, including this mug. Dwarven mugs! Brennan's custom mix. The mug bears the inscription. Five minutes here is 15 minutes there. I don't know what that means, but all right. Uh, I'm going to get this gear. I'm going to make sure that there isn't another one over here, because I always misremember where the ones are over here. I'm going to go back down. And then we drop down back to where we were. So, um, this area, I'm just, I'm going to double check my map here, but I think, um, oh no, you know what? I missed one, didn't I? Nope, that's where I'm at. That's where I am right now. Okay, so, I am actually going to call it here for plot for right now. I'm going to teleport back up a couple of floors. We're going to go back to the Legion of the Dead uh, expedition table here um, and go from there. Back up in the Storm Coast Fissure. Set some stuff up. Deep Rose Expedition, recovering barreled treasure. We, we, we marked this off earlier. We'll send Colin and his people. Yay! And then we've got this, Deep Roads Expedition, Hedron Tig Central Bridge, and this, Deep Roads Expedition, Hedron Tig Upper Bridge. Oh, I see. Okay, I'm like, I'm looking at the spread of the map, and I'm like, I didn't realize these all connected, but this, this is all the map that I was on. So, long story short, they don't. The Inquisition has discovered an interesting artifact halfway down the ruins of Hedron Tig. A construction team could build a bridge that grants access to the large monument in the center of the cavern. With one letter to the University of Orlais, I can have scholars clamoring to help pay for the construction of a bridge to the monument. I can assign a few scouts to the area around the monument to keep the construction effort clear of unwanted attention from the deep roads. Experienced soldiers should accompany the construction team in case of unforeseen dangers around this artifact. I mean... Dwarves know their shit best down here. So we'll go with Josephine. Hooray, we have a bridge down to Hedron Tig all of a sudden. I'm gonna have to remember that that's where I am next time. Hedron Tig Upper Bridge. The Inquisition has identified a location near the entrance to Hedron Tig that is rife... Or ripe, excuse me, for exploration and recovery efforts. A construction team could build a bridge that grants access to several dwarven ruins at the top of the Tig. We have the coin to hire the best dwarven engineers for this task. My scouts will ensure the construction team's safety. A patrol of our best soldiers will accompany the construction team. No, seriously, Cullen, no. We don't want to lose our best soldiers any more than we want to expose the dwarves to extra darkspawn. The construction team has completed a bridge near the entrance to Hedron Tig that will allow Inquisition forces to explore several dwarven ruins at the top of the Tig. Hooray! That's where we're at. That is, as a matter of fact, where I am going to save, and I am going to call it for today, because it is quarter of one in the afternoon, and I have to get ready for work and do things. So, typical outro nonsense. If you like what you see, and you have not yet dropped me a follow, you can click that button up there that says follow, and you can get notifications when I stream. I also have a Twitter. I throw all of my, well, a lot of my updates um, I throw all the updates for when I'm streaming on there, um, in case I'm going to be streaming something different or something, like, off-schedule, all of that is going to go on my Twitter. Um, I also tweet about, you know, other things, like Fire Emblem Warriors will come up occasionally, because I'm playing that off-stream, because it's a 3DS game and I can't play it on-stream. Um, also, it's just fun, so a lot of, a lot of the things that I'm not streaming end up there, it is mostly fandom stuff. I also have a Discord. All of my tweets will also end up in my Discord now, because I have a bot that does it for me. I don't have to remember anymore. Um, the other thing is, it is a relatively small Discord server, but we're all very friendly, so you are obviously welcome to zip in and join my Discord server. You can chat. You can chat about things that are or are not related to the stream. It doesn't matter. We're pretty friendly. Um, and last, but most certainly not least, 
if you like what I do, if you want to try to help make it a little bit better, and if you have it to spare, you can buy me a coffee on Kofi. Um, Kofi is a site which basically allows you to tip people for things that they do already and or pay for things in the future. So currently my goal is um, I am trying to raise money to get myself a decent uh, streaming setup so that I can stream from other places than my PS4 so that I can do things like put up a like an intro screen or an outro screen or a BRB screen if I have to run to the bathroom so that you're not just kind of staring at the same stuff. As cool as these graphics are, you don't necessarily want to be staring at the same thing the entire time. And then, you know, if people walk in and go, there's nothing happening, I'm leaving, you know? So that kind of nonsense will make it a little bit easier. Um, so I have it, I believe it's something like 70% funded right now. It may not happen immediately once I get that funding because I, I just bought a car also. So I'm, I'm trying to manage some things at the moment but either way it is uh all of that stuff is coming in um slowly but surely so um we are probably gonna raid avery let's see who's let's see who's actually active right now <gasps> avery doesn't seem to be streaming am i losing my mind who can i raid It might just be too soon after um, I ended up, uh, after she left to end up streaming. She might be, like, eating or something. Um, nobody that I follow is streaming right now. Um, there's... Hmm. Let's see. Is there? Mm. That's not English. You know what? For once, I think I'm actually going to end uh, without doing a raid. So, um, just because nobody, nobody that I know is streaming, so I'm like, I'm going to send you to... I don't know any of these people. Um... Shit. So, you know. I am going to end stream here. I hope everybody has a great day. Um, hope you have hope you have a good couple of days. I will be back on uh, Wednesday at 10 a.m. I haven't, I haven't been able to stream every single Wednesday recently due to various bullshit. But I will be back on Wednesday. I hope everybody has a good day. I'm going to get out of here. Have a good one. I am out. Goodbye. Okay,